Welcome to Africa Express. Today, we have with us as our guest, His Excellency Amani Kouroumi, former president of Zanzibar. He's been here at the Boston University APAC Center um, this, uh, with the first lecture, inaugural lecture um, of the APAC. He's been talking about um, the issues concerning the Middle East and North Africa, uh, the problems that are that have been going on there in the last few weeks. And he is also at the show with us today to um, continue discussing this issue and to kind of like enlighten us as to um, some of the questions some of us have in mind regarding what's going on there. Your Excellency, you're welcome to Africa Express. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for be agreeing to be on the show. You're welcome. welcome. Appreciate it. Um, in the last few weeks, we've seen the eruption of protests in the Middle East, North Africa. So why do you think it's taken this long for people to finally decide to make a change? Well, in my opinion, I think um, the global economic problems now which, are, which those people are facing may have... Uh, being the, the factor you see behind all these uprisings. Because I don't see any political political groups or political groupings, you know, uh, support, supporting those uh, uh, youngsters who went into the streets, you know, to demand change. All they wanted is change for the better of uh, their livelihood, for the better of their social systems and social services and so on and so forth. So I think it's because of the present global economic situation, you know, that has caused all this unrest. In other words, they're tired of suppression. Yes, in a way. And why? Why is it these uh, the uprising are, are focused on those two, especially those two particular countries, two or three countries in North Africa? The reason being, you know, um, those countries have. Um, had, uh, oh, they have been under the rule of, uh, of one uh, strongman for more than 20, 30 years. And I think uh, the people there have got tired of, uh, of uh, seeing the same face all over again with no new ideas. So probably this is also a second factor that has contributed to, to the change. And the third one could be, um, and I believe, Strongly, it could be because of uh, you know the emergency emergency uh, uh, powers that uh, those regimes have uh, have been living under for the last uh, 19 years for Tunisia and almost 30 years for for Egypt. You know, so it's not easy for people to you know to endure so many years of uh, uh, living. Yeah, if you if you like it to to call it that way. The protests seem to be spreading rapidly. We see mm -hmm. all these other little other countries starting up in you know in little batches. Okay. Um, what do you see as the implication of this across the region? Uh, well, there's going to be a fallout, of course, across the region because um, uh, there are some. Uh, autocratic regimes still existing in um, our part of the world. And uh, I believe that those regimes would be susceptible to such kind of uh, uh, change that people, I think, would, uh, would, would take cue on what is happening north of their borders you know, and say, ah, if, it's, uh, if it, it, it happened in Tunisia, if it happened in Egypt, why not here? So I think there may be a fallout there. And this needs to be looked at very carefully. Oh, are they copycats? Are they just... 
Uh, well, it's not easy, you know, to copy a thing like that without, uh, you know, fundament fundamental issues behind. Because, uh, I mean, if, uh, if, if, uh, if, people, if people don't have a reason to, to, to say no to something, then they just won't say no because others have said no. No, no. It takes courage, you know, for someone to, to come out and say, well, I've had enough of this and uh, we are not moving forward anymore here, so we won't change. It takes courage. Now, if there's need for change, people will always come out and say, we want to change. And they will succeed in doing so. So there's no question of copy, cats, or copying what the others have done. No, no, I don't think so. There must be very serious issues happening in the, those countries, you know, which made those people to, to revolt. President Gaddafi has been in power for a very long time. And up to recent times, it seemed like the West kind of like started to embrace him, not necessarily. But he, also the African Union. So my question is, should the African Union, if anything, have anything to say about what is going on in Libya? Yes, it's a very important question, and even very interesting. Yes, the African Union must have something to say about uh, what is going on in any country which is a member state of that union. Um, Libya happens to be one of them. So I believe that the African Union, the African Union, you know, uh, will take some uh, uh, steps in uh, and contact. Perhaps they've already established contacts, you know, with the. Libyan regime and to find a way out of this conflict because it's part of uh, their responsibility to do so. The, the security, UN Security Council and the Western world, everybody had been contemplating as to whether there should be a no-fly zone. And we do understand that there are consequences that come as a result of that. Do you think that that is an option to be considered? Well, it's a very difficult question for me to, 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 to answer because, uh, as I said before, <laughs> uh, imposing a no-fly zone in, uh, in Libya at the present moment, you know, may not help the situation over there at all because what else after the no-fly zone imposition? Would uh, the Western uh, democracies send in military force over there? And should they decide to launch military offensive into Libya against, you know, pro-Gaddafi forces? What will be the damage, you know? There may be collateral damage, which may take a very long time to settle. So I don't think even the Libyans are interested in getting uh, foreign fo forces, you know, entering their country. So. If they are contemplating uh, to impose uh, a no-fly zone, then I think they, they have to be very careful in how they, they operationalize it. It's not an easy task, you know. 